It's incredible to think that you can play 49 emulators all on your own PlayStation 2. I'm about to teach you everything that you need to do to get this up and running on your own PlayStation 2 so you can play your favorite retro games your way. Stick around, you're about to learn something new. You'll need two things for your PlayStation 2 to make this work. The first is a free MacBook memory card, and the second is USB storage formatted in FAT32 format. All of the magic happens here through the power of RetroArch. I've got this website linked for you in the video description. On this page, scroll down until you see the listing for the PlayStation 2 download section. I've got this kind of blown up a bit to try to make it a little bit easier to see on mobile. When you find the PS2 logo, locate the download link and click on it to get the latest version of RetroArch. In your downloads folder, you'll find the RetroArch.7z file you just downloaded. I'm using a free and open source extraction tool called Zipware. I have it linked for you in the video description if you need it. You can just uncompress the file to its default location. Then delete the 7z file to eliminate this clutter out of your downloads folder. You'll find it a lot easier moving forward if you rename this RetroArch folder to something else. In this case, I'm just going to rename it to Retro Games so that you can distinguish this RetroArch folder from one that's going to be created by RetroArch on your PlayStation 2 in just a moment. Cool, let's get this folder copied over to your USB drive. I'm going to place the Downloads Folder File Explorer window on the left side of the screen. Then I'll insert my USB drive, and when that window appears, I'm going to place this File Explorer window on the right side of the screen. Now all you have to do is grab that folder and drag and drop it directly onto the root of your USB storage. You can remove the USB drive from your computer, but leave your computer powered on and leave the downloads folder open in File Explorer. We'll be coming back to it in a moment. Insert your free boot memory card and USB storage into your PlayStation 2 system and power it on. You'll notice that it says free hard drive boot in the top left corner. That's just running Freemic Boot from an internal hard drive. It makes no difference whether you use a hard drive to run Freemic Boot or a memory card. This process will be the same throughout the video. Let's get RetroArch set up on your main menu of Freemic Boot. To do this, use the D-pad to scroll down through the list of choices until you get to the Freemic Boot Configurator. 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 Pronounce it your favorite way and select it with the X button to continue. You'll be presented with a choice to choose to either use X to go forward and circle to go back, or the other way around. I'm just going to use X to go forward and circle to go back, so I'll press the X button here to continue. You'll see a large number of menu options here, but don't worry, this is about to get demystified very quickly. There's a highlight arrow on the left side of the menu choices. All you have to do here is use the D-pad and move this little triangle highlight down until you get to configure OSD Sys options. That stands for On-Screen Display System Options. Select it with the X button to continue. On the submenu that appears, use the D-pad to move the highlight triangle down one listing to Configure Item. You'll see that there's a number next to the term Configure Item. You can press the D-pad right and left to change this number. What you need to do here is press the D-pad to the right until you find a number that does not already have a menu item listed next to it. In this example, you'll see that item number 6 has no text next to it. That's the one we're going to use to configure it for RetroArch. Select it with the X button to continue. From here, make sure that name is highlighted and select it with X. You'll see an on-screen keyboard that will let you type in a title name for this menu item. In this case, it should be RetroArch because that's what we're setting up. Once you have the menu title set the way you like it, come down to OK and select it with X. You'll need to tell the configuration tool where the RetroArch executable file is located. Use the D-pad to move the highlight triangle down to Path 1 and select it with X. This menu shows you your storage locations on your PS2. To switch things up a little bit, the highlight changes from an arrow to a red highlight over the text. Move that red highlight down to Mass. Mass represents your USB storage. Select it with the X button. From the root of your USB storage, use the D-pad to move the red highlight down to the folder on it and select it with X. You'll see a file here named raboot.elf. .elf files are executable files for PlayStation 2. Move the highlight down to raboot.elf and select it with X. Cool, the menu is all set up, but you need to save your changes. Use the D-pad to move the highlight arrow down to return and select it with the X button. On the next screen that appears, you need to do the exact same thing. Move the highlight arrow all the way down to the bottom to return and select it with the X button. This is the menu where you'll save your configuration file. There are several choices to consider here. When you move the highlight arrow down to the bottom set of choices, they all say Save CNF2. That's your configuration file. I wouldn't recommend saving it to your mass storage or USB because that's something you might remove or insert and you're saving a key menu item here. If you're going to save to your memory card, save it to MC0 or MC1 depending upon which slot you have your memory card inserted to. In this case, I'm going to save it to HDD because I'm saving it to the hard drive. 
Whichever storage device you're using to run Freemic Boot, select that option with the X button. Then scroll down to Exit and select it with X to go back to the Freemic Boot main menu. To launch RetroArch for the first time, use the D-pad to scroll through the menu choices until you see, wait for it, RetroArch on the menu. Pretty cool, huh? Press X to launch RetroArch for the first time. And while it's loading on your PS2, check this out. I've got a free video game that you can download right now to play in RetroArch. And what's even cooler is, I made it. It's called Raven's Core, and it's compatible with Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. You can download your free copy of Raven's Core right now by checking out the link in the video description and pinned comment. Once you download the game, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Alright, it looks like RetroArch is loaded up. Let's check it out. So this has got to be the easiest part of the process. The only thing you need to do here from RetroArch is just move this highlight arrow all the way down to Quit RetroArch and select it with the Circle button. You see X and Circle are swapped inside RetroArch. Then power off your PS2 and remove the USB drive. When we last left your computer, we had File Explorer open and it was set to the Downloads folder. You no longer need the folder that you downloaded and uncompressed, so you can delete this out of your Downloads folder. Take the USB drive that you removed from your PlayStation 2 and insert it back into your computer. You'll see that same folder on the root of your USB storage. But check this out. When you go into that folder now, what you'll find is that RetroArch on your PS2 has actually created a new folder and a series of subfolders inside of it. And that new folder is called RetroArch. That's why we renamed the root folder. It just makes it easier than trying to go into a folder called RetroArch with a subfolder called RetroArch. It can get confusing when it's on your PlayStation 2. Navigate to that new RetroArch folder and double click into it. Let's copy your game ROM content and your system BIOS files into these subfolders. I found that the best place to put your game ROM content is in this download subfolder. You'll see why when we go back into RetroArch. To get this done, I'll grab the File Explorer window for downloads on the USB and bring it to the right side. I'm going to open up a new File Explorer window on the left side, and this has a folder called Demo. In this one folder called Test ROMs, I have a sampling of game ROMs for games that I own. And you guessed it, there's a folder in there for Game Boy, and it includes Raven's score as well. The game files are in zip format, as RetroArch on the PS2 can unarchive them and play them right on the console. There's also a folder here called System. It's important to note that these BIOS files are not compressed. Most of the emulation cores inside RetroArch require that the System BIOS files be in uncompressed format. Alright, let's get this stuff copied over. I'm going to go back into the Test ROMs folder. I have the ROM split by System in individual folders. Control A on the keyboard to select everything, then drag and drop all of these folders into the Downloads folder on your USB storage. Go back one level in the navigation on the USB drive. There's a folder on here already pre-configured called System. Locate that folder and double click into it. On your PC, locate the folder that contains the System BIOS files that you intend to copy over. In this case, they're in a subfolder called System inside that demo folder. I'll go into that folder, press Ctrl A to select all, and then drag and drop them into the System folder on the USB storage. Alright, you're done with your USB storage and done with your computer. Remove the USB storage from your computer and close out any instances of File Explorer. Back at the Freemic Boot main menu, navigate down to RetroArch in the menu and select it with the X button to relaunch the program. Inside the main menu, there's a key setting that I recommend you change. Move the highlight arrow down to Settings and press the Circle button. In the Settings submenu, scroll down to Video and press the Circle button. The second menu setting inside this submenu is called Scaling. Move down to Scaling with the D-pad and press Circle. The second listing inside this submenu is called Aspect Ratio. I recommend that you scroll down to this with the D-pad and press to the left several times to change this from 4x3 to Core Provided. Not all of the emulators inside RetroArch are pigeonholed into a 4x3 aspect ratio, so having the core provide the aspect ratio will set this up correctly on your TV for you. Once you have this set, press the X button to go back in the menu, and X again to go back to the settings menu. Let's double check and make sure that your configuration file will be saved when you exit RetroArch each time. Scroll down to configuration and select it with circle. Make sure that the slider for save configuration on quit is set to the on position on the right side. It should be by default, but double check it just in case. Once you verify that the setting is turned on, press the X button to go back one level in the menu. Then press X again to go back to the main menu of RetroArch. Ready to try out some games? Yeah, me too. Scroll up in the menu system until you get to Load Content and select it with the Circle button. From here, scroll down to the listing for Downloads and select it with Circle. You see, this is why we copied the stuff over to the Downloads folder on your USB storage. It makes it super quick and easy to access your subfolders for your games. Let's try out that Raven Score game. So here I'll move the highlight down to Game Boy and press the circle button. Here's the Raven Score game in zip format. So I'll move the highlight down to Raven Score and select it with the circle button. 
At the next menu that appears, use the D-pad to move the highlight down to Load Archive and press the Circle button. You'll be asked which core you want to use to play the game. In this instance, I found that the MGBA Game Boy Emulator Core worked best. So for this example, I'll move the highlight down until we get to the core for MGBA and I'll press the circle button of the controller to load it. And just like that, you're on a mission to save the Earth. Make sure you get your free copy of Raven's Core while you're here. Then check out this video on how to set up a hard drive for your PlayStation 2 and play your favorite PS2 games from the hard drive, no disc needed. I'll see you over there.